Welcome back. And we are going to continue our conversation about space. It is an out of this world opportunity. I was reading this yesterday and I just had to share, NASA is offering everyone that includes you, a chance to get your name flown for free around the moon during its upcoming Artemis One expedition. All you have to do is sign up on their website and you'll be added to a flash drive that's headed to the stars. You'll also receive a digital boarding pass that'll make your kids or grandkids someday say, oh my God, you're so cool. <laughs> I can only imagine. So the Orion spacecraft is expected to launch in May or June, and it is going to travel over 280,000 miles, the farthest a ship has traveled with astronauts on board. And it is the first time a woman and person of color will land on the moon. So if there's any mission you wanna be a part of, I would say this one is it. But before you go do that, stay with us right now because we have Aggie Cobran with us. She is the managing editor of Ad Astra Magazine and the event production manager for several uh, space conferences around the country primarily the National Space Society. Aggie, welcome to the show. We're just so glued to the all about space thing. Why does space matter? You know, it's, and thank you, Lauren. It's great to be on the show. It's really interesting what's happened in space because we do vaguely remember what it was like many years ago when the astronauts launched and we went to the moon and, you know, all those wonderful things happened. And then it kind of, faded away. We had space shuttle going for many years, but a lot of people weren't even that aware of it. It became so routine after a while that people didn't pay as much attention unless there was a catastrophe. And it just kind of lingered along. There was a lot going on that people really weren't even aware of. And then suddenly, um, we'll call it the billionaires race started. SpaceX got into it. Uh, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin got into it. Uh, so Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic got into it and suddenly everybody was into the space thing. And there was lots of talk and there was lots of money being put into it and there's lots of conversation going on. And that's really um, what has energized it in the last few years. It, it, it has changed over the years, it faded, but you know, it's always been there. Um, the big difference is it was always government. It was always NASA a long, long time ago. And that has absolutely changed where now there's a lot of other organizations involved. There's a lot of um, uh, private enterprise. You know, it's become a private enterprise. That's the big difference. It does, and, feel, it does feel a little bit like they want us to become the Jetsons for those of us who remember the Jetsons. Yes, yes. We all had, you know, parked in our driveway outside of right. our risers is, is the little spaceship that we travel around with. So I can't help but hold that vision as all of this private, you know, private enterprise really takes us into space. How close is that to possible reality? It's it's happening. It's not just close to possible, it's happening. There, there are things going on all the time now. There are um, launches at Kennedy Space Center constantly. There's launches out in the desert. We see the, you know, we see some of it. We see when, when Blue Origin takes off and somebody like William Shatner's on it or some other famous person is on it. And they're really only going to, to, to the, they're not going out into space. They're going to the, to the cusp. Um, so there's a lot of things happening right now. We hear about it more. You mentioned I'm managing editor of Ad Astra Magazine, which is a space magazine. A few years ago, we never would have thought about putting this into bookstores. There wouldn't have been a market for it. Now we've got it out in bookstores. It's selling really well in a thousand bookstores across the US and Canada. You know, it's quite remarkable what's happened the last few years. I took over the magazine about five years ago, and the world was a very different place. National Space Society, who is one of my biggest clients, I do a lot with them. I do their events and their magazine. People made fun of them. I mean, it's it's like, really, you really think people are going to go to Mars, and you really think people are going to live out in lower Earth orbit or live out in space, and that's just crazy. And now look what's happening. People are seriously, seriously talking about it. Trillions of dollars is going into it. There's a lot of reasons um, that go way beyond the average person's understanding of what's being developed when you got into space. We wouldn't have the GPS system we have. We wouldn't have the satellite system. There's so many things that we have because of the space program, the internet, because of the space program. So there's a lot of things that people aren't aware of that are gonna develop and happen over the next number of years. And you know, there's lots of different beliefs. Are we really 
damaging the earth so much that we have to find someplace else to go to. That's a very personal thing. I'm, I'm hoping we're not. I'm hoping we don't get to the point where that ever happens, whatever number of years, thousands of years from now. But it is a practical thought. And, um, it, you know, there's just the moon is out there. Look at it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the air up there? <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting. And look at the picture behind me. And that's the most fascinating thing. And we talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, the, the effect, this effect of seeing the earth from a distance, of seeing how fragile it is, of seeing it's just one little tiny planet out there in the midst of billions of stars. And, you know, we are very fragile and we have to be aware of that and understand that. And there's a much better understanding because we're going to space, because of this overview effect, because people are coming back and they're realizing how vulnerable we are as this little blue planet floating around out there. And this is an actual picture, by the way, of, of that was taken. You're on the moon and you're looking back at the earth. This is what it looks like. Wow. So, so the whole space program has changed and developed so much, but so much of that is owed to what they refer to as the space millionaire, billionaires actually. And they have made a vast, vast improvement in what's happening. And they've actually kind of taken it over. Although NASA is still very, very involved and NASA is still doing a lot. So are they working in conjunction with NASA or are they? Yes. No, no, it's, it's, this is a real team effort. And that's another thing that is, I won't say well hidden because it's not, it's out there and people are aware of it, but it is definitely a team effort. Um, nothing can be done without working hand in hand together. They, the permission, the guidelines, um, you know, NASA's funding essentially SpaceX in a large way for taking folks up to the space station, eventually to the moon. Um, most recently, four people were up in space for three days. That was on a, on a SpaceX craft. Um, but, you know, all of this is tied in between NASA and, and these companies. And I won't say all the companies are working real well together, but NASA's working well with them. Mm -hmm. um, occasional little lawsuit, you know, typical stuff. <laughs> Just billionaires being billionaires, right? Billionaires being billionaires and not always getting along and government not always getting along with them and, you know, all the usual stuff. But it's been really interesting putting together conferences in that arena is fascinating, hearing the speakers, um, running competitions. You know, we've got competitions going on with prizes for students that are interested. We've got tons and tons of student activities going on now all over the United States. Um, lots of excellent speakers, both from NASA and private industry coming to these conferences, tourism so, conferences. Uh, also. I have a big conference coming up, I know, in May. So tell us, a, give us an example of, you know, what people would expect and can the general public access it? I mean, can our viewers access this program? You know, that, that's an interesting question because all the streaming and everything else we've done the last couple of years because of um, COVID because people couldn't get to conferences. We are trying to do this conference as a live conference. It's uh, May 27th, 28th, 29th. It's in Arlington, Virginia at the Hyatt. It's a beautiful hotel. Uh, and, and it is a live event. We are going to stream a few things like contests and things like that. But the intention is to try to get people there. We have um, administrators from, I'm going to read through the list just a little bit because I won't remember everybody's name. But we've got um, Catherine Lauder, who's the Associate Administrator for Space Operations at NASA. We've got Lori Garver, who is involved in all sorts of things and used to be a Deputy Administrator at NASA. We've got Peter Beck, who's the Founder President of Rocket Labs, which is a huge company company out of, uh, um, out of uh, New Zealand, which is getting a lot of press right now. We've got people coming in from Northrop Grumman and Nanoracks, which is a big company, people who are specializing in lower earth orbit types of things. Um, it just goes on and on. Number of people, chief scientists from NASA, uh, Axion Space, um, Earthrise Alliance, Electric Sky, uh, you know, it just the, the, there's a wide variety of people, both from NASA and from a lot of these other organizations that are involved. I'm hoping we have somebody there from Blue Origin and SpaceX. We haven't got confirmation on that yet, but we typically have. Um, we've actually had Jeff uh, Jeff Bezos at conferences a couple of times now and Elon Musk at a conference. Uh, chances are we won't get them there right now. There's a lot going on in these organizations, but hopefully somebody will be there from those companies. And it's a chance to talk and meet, and it's a chance for everybody to meet people in the space industry. And that's everybody from, from you know, high school students, college students, up to people who just have a really, really strong interest in space. The National Space Society is kind of cool because it's 
it's it's got a lot of people who are in the industry, but also a lot of people who are just interested in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's geared for, the, both the magazine and, and that conference. We do another one called Space Settlement Summit, which is much more specific to the industry and it's by invite only. And then I'm also involved in three or four other conferences that again, many of the, which are open to the public. There's space tourism conferences, there's space symposium, there's space frontier foundation. There, there are endless numbers of conferences throughout the year. And for the most part, you can get into any one of those. Um, if you have a real interest in space, you'd love to meet those people. You want to talk, talk about space with them. And it's at all levels, which is the really cool part of it. My background isn't in space. My background is in events and event management. And um, I have a company called CEC Global and also E360 TV, but we've gone into a lot of these space conversations and uh, broadcast them and do all sorts of different things. And, and that's the nice thing. It's no longer that tight little group that really is inside. It's really opened up to anybody that has an interest. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are really interested in space now. I think that's amazing. And I know my, my niece and nephew who are 11 and 13, have this burgeoning interest. And, and it's beyond what my brother and I experienced watching Neil Armstrong walk on the right. You, you got excited about an event, but you had no clue about anything else. And now, because of the access to information and the opportunity to really learn on your own and pursue the rabbit holes of all these questions, I think it's tremendous to open up these opportunities to learn and meet the people who are actually doing the work and generate interest from the next generation, which is really super. That, that's really important. And, and as I mentioned, some of these contests and things, we bring students in from all over the world for some of them. And you know, some have prize money, some have trips, some have other things, but the idea is to get the next generation really interested in this and in all of STEAM and STEM. But um, space happens to be an interest of a lot of people and it, and it's nice to be able to say you know what anybody can get into that industry now you don't have to be the engineer you can be an accountant you can be a lawyer you can be an assembly person you know there's all so many things going on right now in that arena um, and it's such a welcoming world because these conferences do exist um, for the most part anybody can attend the magazines are out there you know on the shelves now uh, that used to be a very kind of tight knit little thing. You couldn't just go out and buy a magazine. You couldn't just go to a conference if you weren't in that industry. And they've really opened it up. And a lot of that is, you know, all those people are out there and look up and wonder. And somebody once said, one of the first conferences I ran, I said, who comes to this conference? Because it wasn't an industry conference. It was kind of, it had a lot of astronauts, but, you know, it was kind of open to the public and, and, and more, uh, the group of people that were there were a varied group of people. So I happened to ask somebody who was very involved in the space world, um, who comes to conferences like this? And, and his response, I thought was wonderful. It's people who go outside, look up and wonder. I you know, they don't just look at the stars. They wonder what's up there. They wonder what's going on. Well, with that, I'm going to ask you, ask just, you just how can people find out more? Where can they get more information if they might be interested in attending the conference? Um, one of the best places to go would actually be my website because I list a number of the conferences that I'm involved with there so they can see the one from the National Space Society, but they can also see three or four others. And that's cecglobalevents.com. So that one's really easy. Um, that's perfect. And then, you know, the National Space Society's website is space.nss.org. So it's just the word space.nss.org. Anything you look up under National Space Society is under nss.org. And then, as I said, there's three or four or five others. And then Ad Astra Magazine. And Ad Astra means to the stars, by the way. People ask me that all the time. It's in Latin, to the stars. Um, Ad Astra Magazine now has a site on its own as well, and they can subscribe to the magazine. And many, many, many people do who are not doing anything else with us, but they would love to see this magazine. It's quarterly. Um, it does a great job of speaking to everybody. It's not just industry-wide. It's, it's a really lovely magazine. It's all very exciting. Aggie, thank you so much for coming to share with us. I know that we will have to have you back because this is just the beginning of something mm -hmm. that's going to continue to grow. And you obviously have your finger on the pulse and I appreciate you coming to share with us. Aggie Cobrin, thank you for joining us, folks. It's all about space. And please go outside and look up and wonder Really, I just think that's fabulous. Thank you for joining us and we'll be right back. <laughs>